All right, so welcome back to our family. Welcome back to our channel. Today, the baby is napping and Dave has the other three children. And so I have a moment of quietness where I can talk to you guys about something that's been on my heart and that is homeschooling. So it is the time of year where us homeschool moms, most of us are looking and planning for next year's curriculum. We are excited to get those fresh books, to do new lesson plans, to get our planners, just all the things, okay? We have these curriculum booklets coming in the mail and they're like, you know, sales are coming up on homeschool curriculum and it's just, it's that time of year. So with all of that stuff showing up at my door, I know that I'm not alone in this and talking with my other homeschool mama friends, they're not alone in this. And so I know that this is a public thought, like we are all thinking about this. If you're a homeschool mama, comment down below, like, is it exciting for you? It's exciting for me. I love a new planner, I love, fresh curriculum, all of it, okay? And so all over YouTube is videos on curriculum picks for different grades and all of these things that are very exciting and um, and can be necessary. But what I wanted to share today was a little more about the heart of homeschool in our home. And um, I know that I'm not alone on this because I know that a lot of my friends who homeschool feel the same way. And so I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who feel the same way as well. And just really, what is homeschooling about? So is it about the new curriculum? Is it about the lesson plans? Is it about the schedules and the um, co-ops and the field trips? Is it about all of that? And for our family, it's not. So I grew up in a Christian home here in the Pacific Northwest and I went to public school until I was in fifth grade. And then in fifth grade, I went to a private Christian school through 12th and then I went off to college afterwards and I got an associate's. So that is my educational background. Um, my husband's educational background is public school from the beginning to the end. He was pulled out one year, I believe fourth grade, for because um, he was behind in reading. I don't even think he could read at that point. And um, they were talking about putting him hit in like special education classes because he couldn't read. So his grandma pulled him out for about a year and taught him to read and he came back and he is totally fine. My husband is not specially educated. He's actually a, has his bachelor's in nursing. He's extremely intelligent. Unfortunately, he was caught in a little bit of the loophole of a public school where we got to get all 30 kids through. And so some kids fall through the cracks, which is very common. And so um, that kind of happened to my husband. That's our, that's our educational background. We both grew up in Christian homes, but we truly came to the Lord um, about four years ago. And we have a long testimony story that I'd love to share in another video. But when we did come to the Lord, we had a very strong conviction about homeschooling. Basically, we read Deuteronomy 6, and that was just all it took for us. We're like, okay, we are the ones in charge of training up and schooling our children, training them up in the way they should go. In Proverbs, it says, so when they're old, they will not depart from it. So in Deuteronomy 6, it talks about homeschooling children, basically. It talks about teaching them, raising them up and teaching them God's commands, teaching it when they're walking on the street, when they're sitting down, when they're lying down in bed, basically teaching God's commands and teaching them diligently, which means persistently, like continually, like all the time teaching them to our children. It doesn't talk about um, sending them to a place where they can be taught God's commands. It talks about us doing it here and wherever we are with our children, but the command is for the parents. And so we took that personally, as we take all the Bible, we take all the scriptures, a living, breathing word of God. And um, that is just how we live our lives. And so as a Christian homeschool mom, I can't deny Deuteronomy 6, and that's what it teaches us. So it teaches us to teach our children diligently. Um, to observe God's commands and uh, to walk with him. And so that's basically our mandate. So we're like, okay, let's do this. In Ecclesiastes 12, 13, it says, fear God and keep his commandments for this is man's all. And if that's man's all is to fear God and keep his commandments, that is the priority. That is like the top of what we should be teaching our children in our Christian homes. So after reading those scriptures, I was just super convicted. My husband as well. We also watched an incredible um, YouTube video uh, from Vadi Bakum, Vodi Bakum, I don't know how to say it, anyways, about homeschooling your children, and it is just so good, and that, that basically was the, that was it for us. So as much as I love the new curriculums and all of that, my goal in our homeschool is to teach my children Jesus's commands, God's commands, and to fear him, and to walk diligently with my children daily, day in and day out, sharing the gospel with them. And that is really the center of our homeschool. And so I see so many parents in these homeschool forums, um, like on Facebook, 
asking about the curriculums or panicking because they don't have a co-op near them and, and how are their ki children gonna socialize and how are their children gonna learn this or that, this or that. I'm gonna take that fear to the Lord and be like, that, what does your word say about this? And so that's basically how, how I navigate different homeschool fears and scenarios. Really remembering that the reason we're homeschooling as Bible-believing Christian women in this day and age is because the Lord calls us to do that. And the reason why he calls us to do that is because it's very important to pull our children out of the world that is indoctrinating them into so many different things that we don't believe that go against the Bible and to pour in scripture to our children and pour in the fear of the Lord and diligently teach them what the Lord has brought us out of. It talks about in Deuteronomy 6, the Lord was uh, had brought the Israelites out of Egypt and the Lord says to remind them that they were brought out of Egypt and Egypt speaks of the world. So remind the children that they were brought out of the world. We are set apart. Um, we are living sacrifices for the Lord. If you truly believe the Bible and you're a Bible believing Christian and you want to be obedient to what the Bible has to say, that's our first go to. And so that's, that's like my little speech on homeschool that I want to just encourage you in and remind you of when you're picking out curriculum and you're thinking about co-ops, you're thinking about this or that, like what is the reality of raising our children? What does the Lord want me to do? He'll guide us in picking the right curriculum for our children. He'll guide us through special needs that our children have. He'll guide us into areas where we can have socialization or pull them out and bring them home. I know that's one of the biggest concerns for homeschool moms is socialization. And um, the Lord will provide areas for you to socialize. He will provide your children everything they need. Your job is to take them to the word of God, be an example of the Lord in your home and walk with Jesus every single day, every single day, no matter what, throughout all the lessons. That's our job really as homeschool parents. I'm gonna talk a little bit about homeschool style now. So there's so many different styles. There's classical, there's Charlotte Mason, there's um, unschooling, there's eclectic, there's um, more, I can't even think of them right now. And so I'm just gonna share a little bit about our homeschooling because I know I'm gonna get questions um, about after this video goes out about curriculum that we use and all of that kind of stuff. And so my style of homeschooling is eclectic unschooling. That is 100% me. I piece together different curriculums, um, but I also have the mindset of the books are not the priority. The hearts of my children are the priority. And again, that mandate in Deuteronomy 6, talking about teaching our children to obey the Lord. That is the number one curriculum that I'm gonna use in our home. And so that would be the Bible. And um, you don't necessarily need a fam fancy curriculum to go over the Bible. You can just read the Bible with your family and the Lord will share with you exactly what you need from it. And so, um, so being an eclectic unschooling type mom, um, basically I use different curriculums. I pull in different things for different subjects or I will just unschool, which means I basically just let my kids learn. And so if they have an interest in something, we will dive all in. So last year, my son, my oldest son had an interest in ants, like hardcore. And so we bought all the things for ants and we literally raised ants in our living room. And it was so educational. And my, my son could tell you everything about ants. Now, is this gonna help him get into college? If that was a concern of ours, my children going to college, which again, that's not a concern of mine. If the Lord guides them to go to college, he will, he will make a way. Um, but it did so much for our family. It was so awesome to study things together and to really just like let their curi curiosity bloom. It was amazing. And so different things, human body. I had a baby last year. And so we went over the human body system and the kids were like enamored with babies and like, how do they grow inside your belly? And then when they come out, how do they eat? And how do they survive and all of this stuff? And so we were able to dive into that. Um, also, we in Oregon here, we are in a beautiful state. We do so much outside hiking and nature walks and um, collecting rocks and homesteading. And uh, I mean, it, the world is a, the classroom literally in our home. And so if I was to have like this curriculum I had to follow every single day, Monday through Friday, my children wouldn't get all the opportunities they get to get out and about. Uh, we go on road trips around the country almost every other year, which is so beneficial for my kids. They know so much about different states and different history about the states. And, um, and so that's more of my unschooled approach is just letting them do what they wanna do. And so while I do like them to stick to like reading, writing and arithmetic as our basis, um, we can learn whatever we want to learn outside of that. And even if there is struggles with writing or math or reading during the day, then we will just move on to something else. I'm just not like 
an intense stickler, like gotta be this, gotta be that. Like we read a ton of books, we do life together. Woody's gonna join us in the video. Do you wanna say something about homeschool? Do you like it when we're home all day? He's gonna lay down there, okay. Anyways, um, okay, so the other thing I'm gonna share um, about school. So um, I'm 37 years old and I hang out with people who most of the people that I hang out with are four to 10 years older than me. I actually have a couple friends who are like 10 years younger than me too. And those are the people that I do life with. I have a couple people in my life who are 37, 38 years old. The reality is most of the people I hang out with are not my age. My socialization comes from people who are not in my age range. And so putting our children in a classroom or if, you're, if they're not in a classroom and you're homeschooling, but you're very concerned that they're not getting uh, socialization with peers their exact same age, look at your friend group. Like is every single person your age, the people who have poured into you and, and um, really given you advice in life who you just look up to, are they your age? or are they older or younger than you? So the, the idea of socialization, when they get into the workforce, they're gonna be working with all ages. You're not just gonna work with your same age. And so that aspect of socialization that I think people just get duped into, your, your kids do not need to hang out with kids their age. We hang out with kids who are older, we hang out with kids who are younger, and my kids hang out together and they're not the same age. And so um, there's just one thing I wanted to touch on. Um, it's just not important to have to hang out with the same exact age people like never in history have you just hung out with your age until the modern schools came in here that we're using the government schools um and then they grouped kids according to their age before that 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 wasn't really a thing another thing that i'm going to touch on that i just totally don't agree with is state or standardized testing and so i know a lot of moms around here in oregon do state testing for their children it's put on in public schools as well and a lot of homeschool moms feel like they need to do it as well um, for their children or for themselves to figure out where their children are at but there are tons of resources online where you can actually have your children take assessments that are not like tests they're more just like assessments to see where your children are to place them in different grade levels or different homeschooling levels so for some of my children um, I have them, let's say, um, let's say my second grader, um, she's in third grade math. She's in first grade science and she's in second grade language arts. Let's just say that. Um, so I, I'm not going to expect her to be in second grade across the line. Does that make sense? Okay. So when they implemented standardized testing, that was basically for the schools to say, look, we're doing a good job. All of our kids are, are meeting this level, this criteria. And then they sent that information to the parents and the parents are like, great, my kids are doing great in school. That's awesome. But in reality, you can't expect a classroom of children at the same age to know the same exact things. One, they're in different houses. They have different ethnicities they're coming from. They have different families. They have different beliefs. They have different ways of learning. Their brains are created. We're all created so incredibly intricate by the Lord. You can't expect everybody who's seven to know the exact same thing that all seven years, seven year olds should know. And so we currently opt out of standardized testing. Some other families in Oregon, I know that they do it. Some moms like to know where their children are. I really don't think it's a benefit to the child. So take me for instance, I'm 37. So let's gather 137 year olds in a room and give them the same exact test. Some of these 37 year olds are doctors, some of them are farmers, some of them are engineers, some of them work at the grocery store, some of them work at McDonald's, some of them are stay at home moms, some of them um, come from different countries. Let's put them all in a room and give them the same exact test and life skills and let's see if they can all do exactly the same thing and grade perfectly at this amount, this level, right? It doesn't make any sense. But again, this system was put in order to help the schools share with the parents that they're doing a good job and they're getting their kids to these certain levels. When in reality, we're all at different levels at different ages. My husband and I are around the same age and he is so intelligent in certain areas that I am so unintelligent in and vice versa. Okay, so if I was to say, you come home, you do my job and I will go to work and I will do your job, we would both fail because that's impossible because I'm trained to do this, he's trained to do that. Okay, so to wrap this up, um, some of the questions we get asked, right, as homeschool moms. How do you do testing for your children? How do you know they're at the level they should be? Well, 
I shared that information. Number two, socialization. How do your kids get out with the same age group and do this and do that? We don't, okay? And that's not a priority to us and it's never been a priority in all of history, okay? Number three, what is the perfect curriculum? Okay, the answer to that, there is no perfect curriculum. I'm an eclectic unschooling homeschooler, so I piece together different curriculums at different times for different children. But there is no curriculum that's going to meet every single child's needs. They need parents pouring the word of God into them. That is the, the basis of our homeschool. That should be the most important curriculum that we use in our homeschool as Christian homeschooling parents. Okay, this isn't going for other. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So teaching our children the fear of the Lord, to be in awe of the Lord and what he's doing. In Deuteronomy 6, it says to teach your children, basically morning, noon, and night, all the time, you are responsible for teaching your children. If you're taking your children to church on Sunday and they're going to a children's classroom and then you come home and you just do life as normal, that is not going to teach our children what they need to know when it comes to loving the Lord. They need their parents to be teaching that to them persistently, diligently, continually at home. And in the end to just fear God and keep his command. It says, for this is man's all. That is our all. That is our all. When you think about that um, and you put that into perspective of life, like what do I need to know? What do my children need to know? They need to know to fear God and keep his commands. And so, and it's not just talking about the 10 commandments <laughs> that's written in Exodus. There are commands throughout the whole entire Bible, especially in the Gospels. Jesus lays out command after command after command of how Christians should walk and how we should live. And so you got to dive into those with your children because they're not just going to pick them up on Sunday morning in children's church. Your children need it daily, consistently, persistently in order to grow up in the admonition and the knowledge of the Lord. Well, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate having you here. I hope that this information was presented in a way that you can understand it and grasp it. I hope it motivates you or convicts you if you feel like, ah, oh, what should I be doing in my homeschool? Um, and again, this is every family for himself. We all are homeschooling. We all have our own little homes that we're running and they run differently. But in the end, we all answer to the Lord at the end of our life. Every single human being, whether you're a believer or not, you will answer to Christ at the end of your life. Um, for the things that you've done in your life. I believe that God gave us these children that we have to raise up for his glory. Not for my glory, but for his glory. And so it's very important that he gives us, he gave us his word that we can sow into our children and raise them up and train them up the best we can to put them out into the world so he can use them for his glory. So if they go out and they do whatever they're gonna do, we want it to glorify the Lord. And so that is the primary focus of our homeschool and of our home in general. Um, is to teach our children that. Well, thank you so much for being here for this homeschool mom chat. It was a little bit different. We didn't talk about curriculum or anything like that, but I really think that the, the message of just teaching our children the word of God is so important. So we wanna be diligent in teaching them his word and diligent in our homes as homeschool moms to make sure that our children are being trained up in the way they should go. So when they're old, they will not depart from that way that you train them up. And of course, when our children get out in the world and they make decisions for themselves and they, they choose who they wanna serve, if they don't wanna serve the Lord and you did everything you could in your power to train them up, then that is what happened. But we can do everything we can while we have them in our home to train them up and show them Jesus's love and his commands. Let me know down below if you would like to know homeschool recommendations for curriculum or day in the life homeschool for us. So if you wanna see like a little insight about that, um, I'd love to share because I do love encouraging homeschool moms to fight the good fight at home and to teach them to remember that we are raising up children for the glory of God. And it's such a blessing to be able to do it. All right, you guys, make sure to like this video and subscribe, share with your homeschool mama friends, and we will see you on the next one.